Hello, everybody. Welcome to the technical analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be leading the session. As we get going, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Just waiting on a few more responses to make sure everybody's okay. Type okay in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen okay. All right, great. I've got enough responses. Looks like we're up and running fine. Uh, if anyone has any issues as we go along, please feel free to let me know. As we move forward, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, no one trade is guaranteed the profit. Obviously, I think we all understand that. Uh, each and every trade has, has risk involved. Uh, so you wanna manage your risk in a way that makes sense. Uh, usually traders are usually using some combination of stop loss marks or uh, maybe setting up pending orders to cover as, as hedges to your uh, primary moves. But whatever the case may be, risk management obviously should be part of your trading uh, strategy. We do offer a unique product at Ava Trade called Ava Protect, which is available on our award-winning mobile app, Ava Trade Go, and also on our web trader platform. Uh, Ava Protect is a, is a system where you can, for a small premium cost, uh, cover all losses for defined periods of time uh, when you first set the trade in motion. And this is available on gold, silver, and FX pairings. So it's a unique feature uh, that could become part of your risk management plan. Now, as we move forward, keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, uh, in general, before we get on the charts and look for uh, some live potential opportunities on the charts, uh, real quick, what is technical analysis? Well, basically it is looking at the historical movements on the charts, usually candlestick charts are the type of charts used by traders. And you're looking for price levels that maybe lend some predictability to them, where you might see uh, the his historical movements bounce up from or, or bounce down from what we might refer to as support or resistance levels. Uh, you also may be looking for certain trending patterns, ranging patterns, et cetera. There's all kinds of different uh, formations and things you might look for in your technical analysis. But the whole idea is you're hoping to find some predictability of future movements based on historical movements. And there's no guarantee, obviously, that the, the future uh, will move it exactly like the past did, but it, it certainly can be helpful to understand those historical patterns as you try and predict future movements. And so uh, there are different ways of doing technical analysis. Usually we're using manual methods of technical analysis in the webinars, meaning we're finding our own price levels, drawing our own lines, et cetera. Uh, you also can use indicators to help you out. Uh, there are any number of indicators out there that can help tell you when the indicator thinks uh, you should buy or sell. Uh, I, I always like to align uh, my own manual methods uh, along with any, indi any indicator signals that I might be utilizing as well. Uh, no, the sound is not off. Uh, I have somebody asking if the sound is off. So uh, let me just give a quick uh, message. Okay, just telling uh, in general, if you're not hearing to check your audio, I sent a message there. Okay, so uh, as we move forward, if anyone wants to give any input, any topics uh, that are related, uh, feel free in the chat box to chime in. I'm happy to share information uh, or answer questions as we go along. So before we get into the technical analysis, I think it would make sense to see what are the headlines right now? What's happening uh, around the globe? And so we could see real quick, it only takes five, 10 minutes to do this before you start your technical analysis. What's the fundamental news situation? And we can see a, a pattern has developed in the headlines, okay? Very easy to pick up on what's the sentiment right now. 
We see a headline here, frustrated by delays, Tokyo 2020 sponsors cancel their booths and their parties. Okay, so that's a negative headline out of uh, Japan that uh, because of COVID fears still, you know, the, the, the Olympics look like they have some problems. Then we go to the next headline. Bank of Japan seen cutting this year's growth forecast as COVID-19 curves hit or hurt the outlook. Okay, so Japan's clearly dealing with COVID still. Uh, they're by, by curbs, COVID-19 curbs, they mean shutdowns. Shutdowns in uh, the economy one way or another from restrictions, trying to prevent the spread of COVID while it's also preventing uh, the economy from doing as well as it could. So Bank of Japan is seen cutting this year's growth forecast. So again, another negative headline, right? Then we move forward and we look at the next headline. Uh, two weeks into lockdown, Sydney has its worst day for virus cases this year. Well, just when we thought the virus was under control, right? Now we see uh, there's a lockdown in Australia. Sydney has its worst day for uh, virus cases uh, for the whole year. So. Uh, that's another negative headline. There's some fear developing about uh, what's going on with COVID right now. Uh, dollar maintains gains. They, they're talking about U.S. dollar uh, after Fed minutes point to tapering. Okay. There's some fear about that, too, on Wall Street. Uh, what's tapering? Tapering means cutting back on uh, the stimulus measures that have been helping to prop up the U.S. economy. So now the Fed's in their minutes a couple weeks back had said, well, maybe we'll cut back on the bond buying program uh, that's been helping the banking system and the money flow in the country. Uh, well, you know, that that's because the economy was doing so well in the U.S. Uh, but now you talk about cutting back the bond buying program. These minutes came out yesterday, right? And so that talk is creating fear, creating volatility on the market where, you know, Wall Street doesn't like uh, when stimulus measures are cut back. You know, Wall Street was doing great reaching new highs because of stimulus measures as the economy was opening back up and, and now cutting back on the bond buying program or suggestion that they might cut back on the bond buying program, fear hits the market, okay? And we could see that those headlines have taken over the market right now. How do we know? The futures are red and not just a little bit red. Look at the US futures on the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 sharply red. We're talking over 1% drop in the futures. When the U.S. market opens, you'll likely see these from yesterday will be red today. Okay, The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, when the U.S. market opens, will likely open in the red, matching the futures that are already way in the red. Okay, We look at the volatility index, S&P 500 VIX, that's the volatility or fear index. Wow. That's all I can say. It's not very often you see uh, the volatility index up over 20%. We're talking almost 25% increase in the in volatility or fear today, just today. Okay, that is a huge increase in fear. Okay, uh, what's interesting is the U.S. dollar tends to strengthen when there's fear. Today it's not, so the markets are a bit confused. Really high volatility and a sell-off on the futures, but U.S. dollar is actually down a little bit. So very interesting setup when you start to do your technical analysis. You've got to keep this in mind, that equities are selling off with super high fear and volatility, but the U.S. dollar is maintaining its strength. Not gaining, not losing right now. If anything, losing some strength. But... Keep in mind, when volatility is so high, usually the U.S. dollar strengthens. So it's, keep that in the back of your mind as you're looking for trade opportunities. Uh, bond markets sent into a spin. Bond markets into a spin. Why would that be? When there's high volatility, where do people run for safety when volatility gets so high? What do they buy? What's a guaranteed return from the banks? Can anyone type what's that what, what's a low percent return but a, a, a pretty much guaranteed return bonds right they run to safe havens and one safe haven when when you don't expect 
inflation, an inflationary safe haven is gold. But right now there's fear that stimulus measures could be cut back, which which will slow inflation, right? And and so if you're not going to run to gold because, hey, we don't expect inflation, uh, where do you run when there's fear? Bonds, right? So I'm with you, Arthur. Uh, so bond prices flew up between yesterday and today. Why? Because high demand for bonds. If you're a bank selling bonds and all of a sudden everyone's buying bonds, you're going to raise the price and lower the yield. You're going to offer less of a yield, less of a payout and raise the price. And that's what happened in the last 24 hours. And that's a lot of times Wall Street investors see this relationship between bonds and equities. And when bond prices all of a sudden shoot up and the, and the, and the yields go down, which is what happened, that's a sign of high fear and a potential sell-off of the equities of stocks. Okay, and and now we see the futures plummeting as bond prices went up and and bond yields went down. So everyone rushed into bonds, driving bond prices up and bond yields down. And uh, and now we see the futures selling off. And when the U.S. market opens, you could see a gap down, a large gap down potentially on the equities, on the indices and the stocks. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind as we then go to the charts to set up pending orders, to, to take market moves. You need to understand that that's the situation fundamentally right now. Uh, really negative sentiment on the markets. OK, and, and maybe we look at oil as well. OK, what happens to oil when there's fear uh, of, of economic ruin, of spreading virus, et cetera, of shutdowns? Oil prices have probably already pulled down. I haven't, honestly, I haven't even looked at the chart. If they're high, might be an opportunity to sell. If they've dropped, you might wait to see if there might be a bounce before you think about selling. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could buy on oil, by the way, as well. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to tell you you should sell on oil. Uh, but the fundamental situation says maybe, maybe the fear would drive down oil and you might look for high coins. Okay. So, uh, I mentioned Ava Protect. If you trade with either, and you go to the, our trading platforms, if you use Ava Trade Go on your mobile device, you can download it from the major app stores uh, right from our website. It'll take you, if you come with your mobile device, click on your appropriate link. Uh, there's Ava Protect. You'll see it available in gold, silver, FX pairings. You can protect against any and all losses for defined time periods by the hour, by the day. Uh, and for a small premium cost, and all the profits are yours if it goes the right way. Uh, it's like it's like protecting your uh, gold move with a gold option, basically, is what you're doing. Uh, so very cool way uh, to handle risk management. And also, you'll notice within the order window, if, before you actually buy or sell, if you program your take profit and your stop loss, it will calculate for you based on your trade size and the distance to your stop loss and take profit. It'll calculate for you how much you would lose, how much you would make. So you're fully informed of your risk management before you set the trade in motion. You don't have to calculate it yourself. So our order window acts as a trade calculator for you. So very good risk management features within the order window on Ava Trade Go. And also if you log in from our website, You'll see the same features on our web trader platform when you buy and sell the, the order window acts as a trade calculator. So if you log in here, you'll be on this platform, our web trader. And by the way, you can trade with your mobile, your Mac, anything on our web trader. So it acts as its own mobile uh, platform as well. And, and, and from PC, it's fine and Mac, et cetera. And, and very cool features, very nice. I advise you check out this platform. Lots of stuff you might not even know. Like if you click the tab here, you go to Trading Central. You have premium services here for free Forex signals, free cryptocurrency signals. Go to Analyst Views. You got your signals right here coming in, timestamped through the day. You see the crypto signals telling you expected direction of the breakout move. And I'll tell you right now, this was right. Cryptos have already plunged today. And look, look what the signal was telling you, okay? Uh, the signals are not always right, by the way, but uh, you've, you've got free signals here and the ideology behind it, the price levels, everything's here, okay? And the same for fundamental news. 
You could find in Trading Central, Market Buzz, on any instrument that has uh, a representation in the in the pictogram here. Uh, you could pull up articles that are ready to read. Again, timestamp most recent articles uh, first. There's a tweet that involves uh, Amazon. Here's a here's an article that recently came out, etc. Okay. So very cool features here. Let's go ahead and get on the MT4 platform. I'm, I'm on my demo here. You guys are free to be on your live accounts. Uh, do as you will. What we're looking at here uh, right now is gold. And I took this position uh, a while back uh, as a simulation based on uh, technical analysis. Okay. And so we're on four hour candles on gold. We've got a resistance level here. That was the impetus for maybe selling based on the technical analysis. Okay. Uh, so the technical analysis shows a big drop in gold because of the fear on the market and the USD strengthening with that fear. Fear that the bond buying program will be cut back, that uh, economies could be shut down now, like Australia with the COVID virus spreading. Uh, with the new strains, et cetera, Japan having problems with the virus. And so all of a sudden, it went from <clears throat> fears of inflation that economies were doing too good, too fast, driving up prices with, with really big demand. Uh, all of a sudden, the fear was the opposite. Not enough inflation. Economies are having trouble again. And down went gold. And, and up went the strength of the USD because gold's a safe haven against inflation. If there's fears that now there won't be enough inflation, then the opposite happens. US dollar strengthens, gold drops, and that's what happened. Gold plunged down. Uh, now it comes back up and it finds some resistance here, okay? Now with all the fear that hit the market today, it's a little funny because the US, we saw in the US dollar index, it's not strengthening. US dollar, we can go back and look at it. Let's take a quick peek again. U.S. dollar index is down, but fear is up 27 percent now, 28 percent. It just jumped while I was looking at it, while we were looking at it. Volatility is through the roof. Look, the futures are down on the Dow over 500 now. So something crazy is going on right now. So uh, fear is through the roof. U.S. dollar didn't strengthen yet. It could, though. The potential that is there with that much volatility and fear. The potential is there for huge moves on these instruments. And so we go back and we say, okay, trading is about potential. I can take a small risk to get my stop loss above this resistance up here. And I have a much larger potential profit if gold drops just back to where it was a couple of days ago, a few days back, a, you know, less than a week ago. This support level down here around 1750. Okay, so. Uh, you know, two to one, three to one potential profit compared to risk. The potential's there with all this volatility and fear that's on the market for large moves quick. Okay. Uh, all the while acknowledging it could be wrong. Gold could climb a bit more. Uh, maybe you put a pending order up here at the next resistance level, which is here. This was a support level here that if gold makes its way up to this resistance level, maybe you have a sell limit ready to go from a higher point as well. Maybe you put your stop loss just above that resistance level. And if it if it hits this resistance, you sell again. If you believe that there's inflate fears that inflation now will drop with the virus creating more fear around the world. Uh, if you believe inflation fears are still there, then you wouldn't be short in gold. Right. So we're, we're making a read on, on what it looks like right now, fundamentally, and then trying to line up the technical analysis to make sense. And so now I'm risking a little bit more on this market move where I still have a larger potential profit, but I've got my stop loss above not just this resistance level, but above the next resistance level, which is here where this big plunge came from. So now my stop loss is just above that resistance. And, and maybe I say, okay, if it does go that high, why not sell? from that resistance, which would be a sell limit pending order. If if the price hits this level here, let's say 1840, that looks like 
a huge resistance level where this where this plunge right here really plunged when it broke this price level. Look at the plunge. So if it gets back near here, that should act as a natural level of resistance. So 1840-ish, you might say, okay, I'll take another sell. Maybe for a little larger than my market move because it's a better price to sell from. Uh, stop loss would be then above that level, maybe 1860. And my take profit then would be down somewhere below that, obviously, uh, maybe 1800. Would be a natural place you might get in if you're starting your trade above 1800. Okay, so if I get it 1840, $40 potential profit back down to 1800 and $20 risk up to 1860. Okay, that's if our initial move's wrong, right? So uh, we could get our two stop losses aligned here. So they're both at 1860. Okay, I'll leave them slightly different just so we can see that there's two of them. So the market move stop loss is at the same spot basically as uh, the pending order stop loss. If the market move goes bad, you can re-enter even with a slightly larger trade, if that makes sense for your risk management, uh, to go after a, a larger move where you could actually be an overall profit, even if your first move is still negative. Okay, so trading a lot of times is about strategy, and you have to think of it like chess, playing chess. Think two moves ahead, three moves ahead. And don't always bank that your first move will be right necessarily. Okay. So I think huge potential move uh, for gold today. Huge potential for a big move. Uh, could be wrong on the timing. If it continues to go up to the next resistance level, you could re-enter again from a better price point if you're thinking about shorting gold. Uh, and at the same time, all of this should be a measured risk because clearly things could flip. And you could lose out on both, right? Uh, but the it, trading, again, is about potential. And if you know, looking at history, that when there's this much fear and volatility on the market, usually the U.S. dollar eventually strengthens and, and gold drops under that type of volatility, then you look at the technical analysis, you, you draw your lines, and you go after that potential profit. Okay? So that's... That's a, an outlook on gold, the technical breakdown with the resistance levels and the support levels uh, and, and where you might think about entering. And so far, this resistance level, the first one on the market move, is holding. It hasn't broken yet. So, And we've got a cushion here before you'd re-enter with another move up at this price level right here, which is just before the next resistance level. Type OK if you're with me on that technical breakdown on gold and the fundamentals behind it, too or questions if you have any. And by the way, you could be shorting gold now in the short term and still have a long, longer term outlook that gold might go up to 2000 an ounce. There's nothing wrong with having a longer term outlook. You know, they talk about the January effect and, and that, that, that traditionally towards the end of a, a year uh, causes gold to move uh, in a certain direction, you could be trading on that type of effect long term. And at the same time, uh, looking at the, the current economic environment for more of short term type moves. Hedging your long term position, so to speak, for short term moves. Uh, and, and we see it looks like gold really wants to push down up this resistance. It's really trying to drop. If we go from four hour candles to say five minute, now you see the drop, right? Look dramatically at the at the line we drew on the four hour candles. Okay, this line. Look where it reversed from. Look at the drop from that resistance level. And, and you'd say, okay, where did that price level come from? This price level. Why did we draw it there? And you say, well, because the four hour candles, if we look back to a prior uh, time period, that's where it dropped from before. And now we see right at that exact spot today, which is why I put in this market move as a simulation, we see the drop right from that same price level, okay? And likely we're seeing the US dollar strengthen now. If we go back to that uh, dollar index, we see US dollar index, instead of being down 0.15, it's down 0.11, right? And so 
we may see the dollar index move into the green along with the volatility index at some point. We see volatility now is up over 30%. Look at that, 30% increase. This is reminiscent of very, very large market sell-offs. Okay, when the U.S. market opens, you could see huge momentum in the downward movement on bonds and major indices. Okay, I'm not saying guarantee that's going to happen, but uh, majority of the time when you see the volatility index up like this, this is a real move, a real move in the equities that's coming. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what about crude oil? What happened to crude oil? Look at the 15 minute candles. Look at crude oil drop. And talk about price levels. Look at this price level support, 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 broken support. Then what happens? It finds the next price level right there. Okay. Support, support, support. What do you think happens if it breaks this next price level? What do you think? Look what happened with, with this support level. When oil broke it, it plunged, formed a new support level. What happens if it breaks below this support level? What do you think might happen? This is huge fear on the market, guys. 30% increase on the volatility index it's like a staircase right you have a flat spot support once it breaks it drops to the next flat spot the next support if it breaks you could see a plunge to the next support level right no guarantee but this is technical analysis so let's go to one hour candles okay here's the support that broke today uh, or yesterday let's say and then uh, today, that support here has not been tested again, but it, it would act as resistance. If oil comes back up, this is a spot that should act as resistance now, unless the fundamental news changes. Okay, With this fear, oil may not even touch this resistance level again. You might be looking at, if you're waiting for a bounce back up before selling, you might look at this resistance level. Resistance, resistance. Resistance, if oil comes back up to 72.39 is this price level I drew as resistance, that could be a spot you could think about shorting oil, okay? Uh, it might not make it way, its way back up there. If there's that much fear, it could just keep dropping, right? Uh, no guarantee oil will drop. It could go back up, right? We could get a headline that there's war in the Middle East that supply chains of oil have been disrupted. You could see oil prices spike through the roof and we could be dead wrong about oil dropping more, okay? So you always want to risk manage to where you could be wrong with your move. With that said, the fear on the market today clearly is driving oil down, okay? Because it's economic fear. It's not supply fear, it's economic fear. Slow down in economy type fear, which then, causes oil prices to drop because there's fear that there'll be less demand for oil. So if we then look at four hour candles, we say, okay, this downtrend looks very strong. If oil bounces back up to this resistance level, that could be a spot where you have a pending sell limit ready to sell. So I could say market execution, pending order, let's switch to pending, sell limit. If oil bounces back up to this resistance level, Let's say 72.3, so you get in just before the resistance. 72.3, if that happens, then I might do a stop loss, uh, a small stop loss, could be 50 cents per barrel, okay? So 72.8 for a stop loss, that gets you above that resistance. And your take profit could be back down at today's low at, uh, let's say, 71. Seventy-one. So if you get in at 72.3, you make a dollar thirty per barrel if it drops to today's low, uh, and you're only risking fifty cents per barrel. So better than two to one risk to profit ratio. Okay. So there's the pending order. That pending order, uh, this pending order 
is based on two things. The technical analysis, if the, if the price bounces back up, there's a resistance level right there, okay? We see it tried to come up and it dropped from it once already. If it reaches that price again, that's the spot that we've prepared a pending order to sell because we see resistance. Why do we trust the resistance? That's the second part of this, the fundamental news. Oil's dropping, breaking support levels the last two days because of COVID fears again. And also because of fears that bond buying programs and such stimulus measures might be cut back soon in some areas like the US, okay? Uh, now, what if oil just keeps dropping? You missed the opportunity, right? Uh, it might not come up and, and, and give you the opportunity to sell from up here. You could say, I'm willing to sell now. I'm willing to make a market move as well because there's so much fear on the market right now. So you could have two positions set up. You could say, if, if the price comes up here, I would love to sell from there. That could be one uh, idea. The second idea could be, I think oil's just going to keep dropping. And since it's not as good of an entry point, maybe I do a smaller position. Okay. Maybe I do a market sell. And again, I say, okay, I'll put my stop loss above this resistance. If it breaks that resistance, I'm out. And now my take profit, instead of being on today's low point, will be on the next support level, which is down here. Okay. I see a, a, a price level here that acts as support and then bounced up. And so it's not as uh, attractive of a move to take a market sell now compared to if it bounces back up because it already dropped so much. But because of the fundamental news situation, for some of you, it might make sense. I, you know what? Uh, I think it could just keep dropping. And when we go to 15 minute candles, you see it bounced up some. It did, did already bounce. And so this entry point isn't at the low point. It's up a bit. And you can see that this price level that it's at now actually has act, acted as resistance now. This was support, support, breakthrough. And now this is a little bit of a resistance area where there was support today. So technically not a bad move okay not necessarily a bad move or or over aggressive move you just have to make sure your trade size makes sense so right now we're basing the technical analysis and the direction of preference on two things the direction of preference is based on the technical analysis and the fundamental news okay and all the while we're risk managing here understanding that yeah the the, the momentum could swing okay uh, Arthur, you asked, so uh, is AVA protect a fixed price? It, it is once you take the trade, right? It, the price changes with volatility on the market, uh, with which instrument you're putting the protection on, uh, whether it's gold or the euro USD or whatever you're putting it on. Uh, so the price is not always the same. It changes. But once you take the trade with the protection, that price was locked in. That's your flat cost. You pay that as you open the trade. You pay the premium cost. Then all the profit after that is yours. All the losses get paid back during that protected time period. Okay, you could be down $100 per ounce on gold. Maybe you bought on gold and gold plunges. Okay, uh, and so if that happens, if you're protected for a day with your protection, if that's the time period you chose, when, when the protection ends, any negative floating is added back and the trade can keep running. Yeah, it's a one-off fee. You could look at it that way, Arthur. Uh, you pay the premium when you open the trade and that's it. It's a flat cost. Now you have a flat risk, which was the cost of the premium, and that's it. You could do two days protection on gold if you think gold's going to sell off, let's say, or if you think it's going to go up. Whatever the case may be. And by the way, you could take protection and take the trade in both directions and pay two premiums. Now, now, if gold goes up or down enough distance to cover the cost of the two premiums, you're guaranteed a profit. And your risk is only the, the cost of the two premiums you got, you pay. You do two days protection, gold could move huge amount in two days. And then you're making profit in either direction. 
uh, as long as you make more than the cost of the two premiums. You can think of that uh, kind of work. It, it's called a strangle. Okay, it's an options trading strategy. Okay, so uh, how about we look at some indices? U.S. Tech 100. Look at the plunge. That's not some small movement, folks. That is a huge move. Those are 15-minute candles. Down, 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 right? Let's look at one-hour candles. Look at the power of trading with pending orders. And what I mean is, look at this price level. This was an area of support, right? Earlier in the week, support, support. It tested it back up. So as this price was dropping, you could have saw that this was a support level. You could have had a pending sell stop right below that support that if it broke the support sell, right? You could have had a sell stop right here below the support level. If it breaks the support, boom, down it went. You're in from this price just below the support level and you make a big profit all the way down. Simple pending orders, not even knowing that the fear was gonna hit the market today, but putting trip lines in the market just in case it happens, right? So in that regard, couldn't we put a buy stop up here? If the movement goes back above this support, old support level, if it goes back above, then you buy because all that fear must have reversed if it breaks back above that price level, right? So you can play with pending orders, just waiting for big news to hit like this that you didn't know what it would be, when it would be, but look at the profit you could have made with a simple sell stop pending order below this support level. This one, when it broke, was a false break. So it comes back up, you take a small loss to your stop loss. Now it breaks and it was a real break. And you make three or four or five times what you lost on the false break that triggered your sell stop here, went back up, hit your short stop loss. This one breaks through and it's a real break. It does not go up and hit your stop loss. It keeps dropping. Even if you're 50% correct, you could be 100% in profit, right? Or, or whatever percent, probably not 100% in profit, but 30% profit, 20% profit, et cetera, on your account, okay? Depending on your trade size, et cetera. All right, so uh, very easy to predict. And by the way, look at look at these candles. Count the hours back. One, two, three hours back. Let's go back one, two, three hours. You could have sold when the price was way up here. Just on the fact that three hours ago, you could have already seen that the volatility index was up 20%. The volatility index was up 10%, 15% hours ago. You could have already known, I'm going to sell on the equities. That headline about the bond prices going way up, the rush to bonds, that headline was out hours ago. So if you'd have saw that headline, if you'd have saw volatility was up 15%, 20%, you easily could have went three hours ago and sold on this instrument, knowing that the equities tend to, to plunge when bond prices all of a sudden spike. And look, look at the drop. So that's a, more of a fundamental move, right? But the technical move was there for you as well. The pending order right below the support level would have kicked in no problem, okay? You'd be in a big profit. Now the question is, what do you do now? Let's go to the bigger candles. I see a support level on the NASDAQ down here, right about there, okay? Look at the staircase. Up, goes flat. Up, goes flat. Up goes flat, up, goes flat, up, goes flat. Now down, it'll probably go flat. Down, it'll go flat, okay, like a staircase. It was a staircase up. Now this looks like a, a big market reversal. The question is, how far will it drop? How many steps in this staircase will go down before the fear wanes and maybe the market rises back up? So you have to start looking at the staircase, looking at the price levels, the support levels and resistance levels. And so here is a price level that seems important. We see resistance, breakthrough, becomes support, maintains support. Old resistance here becomes new support once it's broken, support, support, and up it went, right? Now it's on its way down. As the price nears this 
support level, you could think about, should I maybe buy, right? And so if you don't like selling right now because it already dropped so much and you're afraid it'll bounce back up, then you don't have to sell in a market that already dropped. You could say, okay, I'll put a pending order down here, a buy limit pending order, if the NASDAQ hits this price today or tomorrow or whenever, then I'll buy from this opportunistic price right above this old resistance level that has already acted as support for some time. Okay, So you could set up a buy limit from down here on this nice support level. Okay, Then at the same time, you can say, I'm going to look for a spot on the smaller candles that maybe I can short the market, that I can sell. I set up for a buy if it drops to a nice price. If this market bounces back up, say, to this old support level, right? This was our support, support. This is where it tested it and went back up. If this pulls back up now towards that old support, it should act as resistance. So if it gets near this old level, and you see this wick, this wick could be important. If it nears the bottom of this wick, that could be the beginning of the new resistance now with all the fear that's on the market it might not push back all the way to this support level up here so you could say if the market nears this wick then i sell okay so i'm looking at uh 14623 so let's say 14620 pending order 14620 if I'm reading my chart right, sometimes I don't see it clearly because my eyes are not perfect. Uh, 14,620, stop loss then, let's go 50 points up. 14,670. And potential profit will go, I don't know, 80 points down, which would be uh, 14,540. And that's a sell limit, sell limit, wanting to sell from a higher price. Okay, so now that pending order's in. If the market pulls up to a little bit better price, just before the bottom of this wick, which probably will act as some resistance, that's a spot where you might want to sell from if you believe the fear will continue and drive the market down. Okay, so we're again, we're combining technical analysis for preferred entry points, but trading in the direction only of what you believe the fundamental news is driving the sentiment. Okay, now you could think the opposite. I'm not telling you you shouldn't buy on this instrument, but I'm just laying out a strategy that makes sense both fundamentally and technically. Now, our stop loss is limited risk just above this old support level that was broken and if we go to one hour candles again or four hour candles we could see our take profit uh is down a bit further okay and let me get rid of some of the lines i drew so we can see our actual trade lines so objects list let me get rid of all the lines that i manually drew so we based our entry points or exit points on those lines that i drew and now we see entry point on the pending order up here right right up here uh if the market pulls up we get in potential profits about double the risk right the risk is from this green line to the stop loss the potential profit is from the green line to the next red line down here okay so i uh, a, a a move that makes sense fundamentally and technically now uh we can also go in back to the one day candles let's go one hour and we could say uh we've got our sell limit ah uh, my buy limit my buy limit's not there let's let's then uh let's set up the buy limit somehow i didn't get it there I know, maybe i deleted it or something by accident but remember we said if if the price drops to this support level down here, then you could think about buying from an opportunistically low point above a, a support level that we saw. And that was down around 14, 
uh, 685, something like that. So you could do a buy limit. So we've got a sell limit. If the market comes up, it'll sell. If it drops enough to the support level, you could put a buy limit down here to buy with your stop loss then just below that support level and you take profit back up just before the next resistance level. Type OK if you're with me on that. The, the combination of setting up a sell limit to, to catch a higher point, to go in the direction of the momentum today, but also having a buy limit down lower in case it plunges to that major support level, you could take a shot at buying. If you want me to demonstrate the buy limit, I could set it up again for you. I'm not sure where, where I went wrong there. I think I, I forgot to finish the buy limit. That's why it's not there. Hedging would be something different. Hedging would be uh, if I'm already selling, let's say on this market, then I could put a, a, a buy stop somewhere up above the resistance that if it goes up too far, I buy to hedge my sell. In this case, we're setting up two, two sell positions, one from a higher point, uh, or I'm sorry, we're setting up a sell position from a higher point and a buy position from a lower point. So that's it's not really a hedge because we're going to close the sell before we open the buy. The take profit on the sell uh, is just before at the same spot that we would get in on a buy. Okay, great. Uh, I think this is a good spot to stop then. Uh, Real quick, if you wanted to set up that buy, buy limit, uh, buy limit, if it was down here just before the support, it's 14,485 maybe. Okay, stop loss then would be somewhere below that, maybe 14,435, 50 points down. Uh, and take profit would be higher, maybe 14,585, 100 points up, okay? So that's a buy limit. So this guarantees this setup that you will trade on this instrument. This guarantees you will trade on this instrument. Why? Because if the market goes up, you're gonna sell with the current fear that might make sense with your stop loss above that next resistance level, or if the market continues to drop, you're going to buy from a major support level after a lot of dropping if it drops that low. Okay, so uh, we this is called a sandwich. We've sandwiched the market. You're going to get in either with a sell or a buy here. I suspect this market might bounce up and trigger that sell limit. And I suspect at some point when the US market opens, we could see further dropping because there's a ton of fear on the market right now. Lucas, uh, some traders, you're right, do not use stop loss. And it's because they're in for the very long term. And they have a very large amount of equity in the account to just sit and wait out the market, especially if you're trading on an indice, right? The indices, if you go to one month candles and look back from the beginning of the indice, the indices have always reached a new high. They've never not. The only thing between an indice and a new high is time, right? Traditionally, I'm not saying moving forward that has to be true, but up until now, 100% of the time that there's been a large pullback, if an institutional size trader, meaning a very large trader with very large equity, gets in on that index or that stock, indices are more diversified, so a bit safer than an individual stock typically. Uh, all the major indices, whether we're talking the DAX, the S&P 500, the Nikkei, uh, the NASDAQ, they've all always reached a new high eventually, if you're willing to wait for it. So when the pandemic hit, the COVID crisis came and hit, and the market sold off and, sold off and the major indices plunged, that was a buying opportunity. Especially if you could put a huge amount in your account and just sit and wait, even if it dropped further, you've got enough equity to hold the positions to wait it out. And so that's what many institutional size traders will do. Just wait out the market. And eventually, at least historically, it's always come back up. OK, now this drop could continue for a while. Right. If you get in now and you say, oh, well, you know, indices have always gone back up. You get in now. If it keeps dropping, you could blow your account if you don't have a big enough account. 
if you're just going to sit without a stop loss and wait forever, you have to have enough in your account to handle that. And you have to be sure that you're on an, an instrument that you really believe will eventually go back up, right? Otherwise, you could be waiting it out forever. You know, you know, you might be buying on gold thinking for sure it'll reach a new high. It doesn't have to always reach a new high. Oil doesn't always have to reach a new high. So look at the instrument you're trading on. And if you're trading without a stop loss, you have to think about why. Okay? It's important that you understand why. And don't just do it because someone else does it. Very good question. All right, everybody. Uh, good luck with the trading. I expect huge movement today, especially as the U.S. market opens uh, later today, which is uh, 2.30 p.m. Uh, London time, U.S. market opens. Uh, be ready for huge bounces, huge moves, and huge breakthroughs on support and resistance levels. Get your pending orders in now. Uh, think, think about your risk management. Maybe top up your accounts to handle the volatility. Uh, and go for it. The potential's there today. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, until next time, good luck with your trading.